All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Pleasure to be here. Um, at the very beginning, I would ask all of you to close your eyes and listen to the sound. You can open your eyes again. The sound that you're listening to is the sound of biodiversity. It's the sound that you would be hearing if you would be on a regenerative farm. Now, I'm curious, especially at this audience, how many of you have been on the farm in the last year? Okay, nice, that's a few hands going up. And how many of you have heard this sound on that farm? This probably means that you were on a regenerative farm. Because if you would have been on a conventional farm, you would have heard this. It's the sound of silence. And that's exactly the reason why me and my co-founder Ivo started Climate Farmers, to bring bird sounds back on our farms. My journey into regenerative agriculture started essentially when I was growing up, because I grew up in an, agri in an agricultural context, and my godmother had a farm of 120 hectares. She was the first generation farmer, and the farm ended in her generation, like so many farms in Europe are doing right now. And because I saw the struggles of a conventional farmer early on, I did what most young people do. I left the countryside, and I went to the city. I lived, studied, and worked in Amsterdam and Berlin. I really enjoyed being in the cities. I had the pleasure of working at amazing impact startups, but I always had the feeling I prefer looking at trees to looking at houses. And that's why in 2017, me and a few friends, we bought an abandoned village in the mountains in the middle of nowhere in Portugal with a few hectares of land. My idea was to build a community, to start living there, and to see what's going on with the world. And then I started looking at our soils, and I started looking at the topic of regenerative agriculture. And I found out regenerative agriculture is a solution to many of the issues that we are facing. And there are scientific studies, among others from Wageningen, which are from the 80s and 90s, which are already speaking about the potential to sequester carbon, to build biodiversity, and to store water in the soil with the right farming practices. However, when I started looking for farmers, I couldn't find any. And I was wondering, how is it possible that we have the solution to so many of the issues that we are facing, and nobody's talking about this? And nobody's doing anything about this? And at the same time, agriculture is responsible for 24% of our greenhouse gas emissions and providing food that has calories but no nutrition. Something seems to be wrong there. So I did what I think every good academic went. Uh, I went on a research study, and I spent one year working and staying with all of the regenerative farmers that I could find in Western Europe. It wasn't that many. It was 60 farmers back then. But in all of these conversations, I spoke with the farmers, I worked with the farmers, and I asked them, why do you think regenerative agriculture is not scaling? What could I do to help you? And, um, and how do you think what needs to happen in order to get more farmers on this path towards regenerative agriculture? And essentially, the answers were the same in all of the countries. And one of the biggest issues that we're having is, it's not sexy to be a farmer. Farmers in Europe are on average around 58 years old. And five years before retirement, you're not very likely to change your ways. The reason for that is, that farmers are not very well regarded in society. In my high school, with the 5,000 people village, there was no one that wanted to become a farmer afterwards. Quite contrary, we always had the idea, if you don't do well in school, you have to become a farmer. That's messed up. Farmers are the core of our society. Without farmers, we can't eat. Farmers should be in the center of our society, and they should be in the center of our agricultural system. At the same time, we also have the issue that there's not a lot of expertise on regenerative agriculture. There's not a lot of consultants which can help farmers in the transition. And for that reason, we started building a community of farmers that are supporting each other in the transition towards regenerative agriculture through a peer-to-peer -peer learning platform and through farm visits on farms where they can learn from each other. At the same time, we were working on lobbying for regenerative agriculture and why we believe that this is the future. We were also working on a movie, but then Kiss the Ground came out. And I'm sure some of you have seen it. If you haven't, please do. It's incredible. They got Woody Harrelson as a narrator, something we could never have done, and they did what started a massive movement towards regenerative agriculture in 2020. Since then, we have seen a rising trend. Regenerative agriculture has been the topic. A lot of corporates have made commitments to it. But at the same time, we still don't see it really working on the farmer's front. And that is exactly why I would love to take you now through the theory of change that we have developed at Climate Farmers, if it's coming up. Essentially, what I will be sharing now with you is the learnings that we have made since 2019 in working with farmers and supporting farmers in Europe 
in their transition towards regenerative agriculture. There we go. First off, uh, we already touched up on it. Agriculture is right now one of the main reasons why we're crossing the planetary boundaries. Biodiversity loss being the, one of the big ones, but at the same time also carbon sequestration. At the same time, we know it's a solution to many of our issues. We had, for example, massive rising fertilizer costs over the last two years. In regenerative agriculture, we can reduce these input costs of farmers. You have probably all heard about the droughts. I mean, we're in France. You just came out of a winter drought, right? Through regenerative agriculture, we can, we, can store so we can store water in the soil, and through that, we can avoid erosion, we can, we can avoid floodings, because the soil is actually able to soak up water, and we can get through droughts. We have research studies which show that we build biodiversity, that we capture carbon, and that we store water. And these studies are already existing for 20 or 30 years. At the same time, it's still not happening at scale. So there's infrastructure missing, which we need in order to take that scale happen. We believe when we talk about scaled regenerative agriculture, that we need 10% of all European farmland to be under regenerative management. Because at that point, we have all over Europe, we have farms which other farmers can visit in order to see how regenerative agriculture works in practice. Farmers are not impressed by PowerPoint presentations, but they're impressed when they go on a farm and they see healthy soil and they see green grass in summer. We're organizing a lot of farm visits at the moment in southern Portugal, and we have farmers that do holistic grazing management, and they have green grass in June. And when you see other farmers seeing that, you see the excitement and the spark in their eyes. And that's what we need in order to scale it. At the same time, we need to start paying farmers for ecosystem services, which they're providing for all of us. At the moment, farmers are only getting paid for yield and not for, for example, building up biodiversity. If we want to make regenerative agriculture at scale a reality, we need to build the financial case for it. And for that, we need to start paying farmers, ideally without subsidies, for ecosystem services. So we have knowledge and we have finance. Let's break this down. On the knowledge side, the key thing that we need to focus on is a mind shift shift from focus on yield to focus on soil health. And around that comes the farmer community, which are supporting each other in making that mind shift shift happen. On the finance side of things, we need to have scalable monitoring. So we need to be able to assess ecosystem services. And then we need to start paying farmers for these ecosystem services. Ideally, I would love to have government taking a place in here. Right now, 60 to 80% of the income of average farmers in the European Union is coming from the common agricultural policy. But it's mostly given out based on size of the farm, not based on what ecosystem services the farmers have been providing. So based on these premises, we ran a lot of experiments with the farmer communities that we're having. And especially in 2021, we are testing a lot. Since last year, we're scaling based on the tests that we saw that were most successful and bring most value for farmers. And these are the projects which we are proposing for other organizations to potentially take over as well. The first part <laughs> is the farm enterprise analysis tool. We're essentially sitting down with the farmer. We're analyzing what's happening on the farm. We're analyzing the economical situation. We're analyzing the ecological situation. And we design a plan together with them how a transition towards regenerative agriculture could look like. Second part, the community. It's very interesting that a lot of farmers uh, that are transitioning towards regenerative agriculture have actually issues with farmers around them thinking they're crazy because they've been doing things for 100 or for 50 years at the same time, and then suddenly the farmer starts rotating his cows on a daily basis. This is a massive issue. So we have the community where farmers support each other and basically together make it easier for them to go through that journey. Another part is an expert platform of agricultural consultants. There's a lot of consultants which have been coming up which claim to be regenerative agriculture consultants, but they don't actually know what they're talking about. So that's why we started having consultants which are backed up by the farmers in our community in order to advise the farmers how to go through some transition in their specific context. And then we have a blueprint process where we're essentially helping farmers to figure out what the transition looked like by taking them through the mindset, the farm business, the ecological context, and then the peer group, and then gathering data on the experiments that they're running and how they're working. And lastly, uh, we measure um, MRV, so monitoring, reporting, and verification, what is going on on the farm in order to feed the data back to the farmers and to reward them through the payment 
of what we call ecosystem credits or regeneration credits, where we pay farmers for the increase in carbon, in biodiversity, and uh, of soil water storage capacity. And then closing it off, some of the example farmers that we're having is, uh, for example, Francisco, who is in Portugal, who has a 700 hectare farm, and who started with us to set up in a holistic grazing system with the rotation of pigs, sheep, and goats in order to generate his soil and to build grass. He's implementing a multi-species agroforestry system right now, as well as key line design. Um, another project that I really like is women in agriculture. It's a very interesting one because it's very underrepresented, but we see a lot higher percentages in regenerative agriculture than in conventional agriculture, such as Beatrice, who's a fourth generation farmer and the first generation of a woman actually taking over the farm from her parents. Also with her, she's establishing a holistic grazing plan and moving the animals one to two times a day, thereby replicating nature and regenerating her soil. And lastly, we have uh, Juan, who's uh, living in southern Portugal and southern Spain, sorry, and having a lot of issues with water situations. So he's also holistically grazing and currently building a lagoon in order to increase the water storage capacity on his farm. And generally, if you're now curious, how can I get involved? We're always open to collaborate with other organizations. We're working with corporates to transition their supply chains, and we're always happy to work with other farmers together to transition them. Thank you. Philip, thank you very much. Thank you also for starting us off with that beautiful bird song. Quick question to the audience. How many farmers do we have in the audience? Yes, right the way back there. <laughs> Welcome. Philip, I have a, a million dollar question for you, <laughs> a million euro question, in fact. What do you think needs to happen in order for us to be able to scale regenerative agriculture in Europe? I mean, I think the, the big issue that we have here is that we're, we're talking about a very complex system, right? So the agricultural system is very stuck, and there's a lot of things in place which, uh, which take time to change. So first of all, we need to put the farmer back at the center mm -hmm. of the agricultural system. We need to start rewarding farmers for what they're doing. We need to get young people back into farming. And then we need to essentially get all the different players on one table. So we need to have the food corporates in place, which need to start paying farmers for producing very nutrient-dense food that's regenerating our soils. We need the supermarkets, which is where most of us are still buying our produce, to essentially start clearing shelf space for farmers and for products from regenerative agriculture so that all of us have an easy access point in order to access these products. And we need government to start incentivizing farmers to transition towards regenerative agriculture by changing the subsidy system in a way that makes sense and that actually leads to ecological regeneration and not to the overproduction that we currently are having. Excellent. So although we only have a few hands that went up when I asked the question, who are the farmers in the audience, if I've understood correctly, in fact, all of us here at Change Now can have a role in regenerative agriculture in some way, shape or form. For sure. I think a starting point would always be to start thinking about where's your food coming from, right? I think a very fascinating thing is that all of us are eating on a daily basis, yet many of us are not really looking into where's my food coming from. Maybe we start thinking about what do I eat? but a cucumber is not a cucumber. So what I would highly recommend to everybody is to start thinking about how is my cucumber grown, where is it coming from, and where is the money going that I'm spending on it. And the best thing that you can usually do is to try to localize a farmer in your area and to get most of your produce straight from farmers because that way you can rebuild the relationship and you can start eating more nutritious and more climate positive food. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Philippe. Thank you for being with us. It's Thanks been great having you here. Catch up with Philippe after this session. <laughs>